I used to work in a KFC a few years back. Later, I went back to my hometown, which is why I left the job. But this is not the only reason why I got fed up with the job. Common dine-outs like this often see customers of all kinds. So, this one-time experience kind of terrorized me for life. I worked at the counter as a cashier, so I had to deal with the customers directly. One night, I was sitting behind the counter and counting the cash at the end of the day when I heard the entrance door fly open. Two boys came inside. One had red hair and a pale complexion, while the other had a bun tied with dirty long hairs dangling from his oily head. They were about 15 or 16 years old. Both of them had a very unclean presence. Their clothes seemed like they hadn't been washed in a long time. I could see dirt in their fingernails. A bad odor took over as soon as they approached the counter. A bucket of fried chicken, please. The red-haired boy said in a cold voice while raising a $20 note at me. The boy with the bun wore a dirty sweatshirt even on that hot summer night. As they stood there like two fishy customers that I would never want to meet at the end of my late night shift, I realized troubles are waiting for me. I told them to take a seat and went inside to tell Ralph about our last order. Ralph was the night cook who joined recently. While giving him the orders, I told him how sketchy those boys looked to me. Ralph laughed and said, I'm sure they won't be any petty thieves, Lucy. You go keep an eye on them. I will be there with the fried chicken soon. I went back and saw those two boys were wandering around the restaurant like they were walking in their homes. The red-haired boy was observing each detail of the shop. I even saw him noticing the security camera too attentively. With their behavior, I could tell they had some other intention. After wandering around for some time, they sat at a table nearby and started to talk in a low but deep voice. I could hear their full conversation, but I heard them addressing each other by the name of Jackson and Liam. The red-haired boy was Jackson and the other one was Liam. So far, I didn't hear Liam say a single word to me. He was the quieter one and also the most mysterious among the two. He had lots of cut marks on his face and every five seconds, looking at me in a very creepy way. I even saw him licking his lips while he laid his eyes on me. The cold stare and their inaudible whispers were making me even more anxious. Suddenly, Liam got up and went out of the restaurant. I wanted to ignore it as this was none of my business, but I still asked, um, where did your friend go? Jackson smiled and said, to take a leak. How long will it take? I smiled awkwardly and said, Nah, not much. Our cook will bring the food soon. You guys are our last customers for the night. Hence, it's taking time to arrange everything before closing the shop. After a few minutes, Liam came back and sat beside his friend, just like before. I waited and waited for Ralph to come out, but time went away. My level of patience gave in, and I got up and walked to the kitchen. The minute I stepped inside the kitchen, the electricity went out. It wasn't a power cut as I could see the streetlight on the highway shining bright. Someone purposefully turned off the power switch. I checked into my pockets and took out my phone. While trying to turn on the flashlight on my phone, I took a step further in the dark and stepped onto a gooey liquid that had a weird metallic stench. Damn it, Ralph, didn't you clean the kitchen? I screamed in the dark. I switched on my flashlight and as it hit the floor, I saw what I just stepped in. There was a pool of blood on the kitchen floor that came from a deep stab wound on the body of our night cook, Ralph. Oh my God. I turned around to leave when I got face to face with Jackson. He stood there with a blood soaked knife in his hand and smiled at me. I remembered there's a back door, so I turned around to escape from there. I was a few inches away from the back door when Liam entered the kitchen. So this is what he did when he went outside. My God. He entered the kitchen from the back door and stabbed poor Ralph to death. These young boys are cold-blooded criminals. They cornered me from both ends, and I knew now it would be my turn to get slashed at their hands. What? What do you want? I said in a terrified voice. <laughs> Look, Liam, she is willing to give us what we want, Jackson said while laughing like a psycho. Let's go to the counter. He said and raised the sharp bloody knife at me. I tried to be calm because one wrong move can silence me forever. They escorted me back to the eating area and when we reached near the counter, 
Liam pushed me from behind. I tripped accidentally and hit my head on the marble desk. Blood rushed down immediately and I started crying in pain. Just tell me what you guys want. Please, just let me go. Yes, yes. We don't want to murder a poor, weak woman. It doesn't worth anyway. We just want the money from the cash register. That's all. You guys are doing this for some money? There's still time. You two are, are too young to destroy your life like this. Do you have any idea what the cops will do to you if they ever catch you? Suddenly, I saw Liam's face turn pale. For the first time, he looked scared. He said in a fumbling voice, Maybe, maybe we should just leave, Jackson. I don't want to go to prison. Jackson grabbed his shoulder and screamed furiously. Don't chicken out now. This bitch is just trying to mess with us. We won't get caught. He slapped me hard across my cheek, making my lips bleed and said, Just give us the money. We don't need your lecture, lady. Jackson gave the knife to Liam and snatched my phone from my hand. Now go to the cash register. Go! He screamed. The flashlight on my phone was the only source of light till now. I knew these boys turned off the power so that the security camera fails to record them. But I didn't want them to go so easily. An idea came to my mind. I stopped and said, Um, the cash register is automated. I need to access the computer to open it. I hope you're not trying to be smart with me, lady, because I'll cut your throat and then dump your face inside that hot fryer in the kitchen. I made them understand that is the case when it really wasn't. They whispered to each other for a few more seconds, and Liam went inside the kitchen to turn on the power. As soon as the power came on, Jackson said, Turn off the security camera. I know you can do that from your computer. Do it! Now! I could have easily faked that and let their entire act get recorded by the camera, but I actually did turn it off because my plan was something more sinister. I opened the cash register and loaded the money inside a bag. As Jackson came close to take the bag from me, I grabbed his head and slammed it hard on the desk. The sudden strike hit him so hard that he didn't even get the chance to scream. Half of his face got smashed as flesh and blood poured out of his wounds. I took my phone from his hands, but didn't call a 911 yet. Liam walked in from the kitchen and got shot, realizing the tables have turned. He ran towards the exit at full speed, and I was ready for my next move. He was inches away from me as he had to walk past the counter to reach the entrance. That's when I threw chili flakes on his face. I had already taken them from the kitchen when these two dumb boys were hacking me in the dark. He screamed in burning pain and fell on the floor. I ran at him and snatched the knife from his hand. I stabbed them both to death. I closed the store, cleaned all the mess, and wrapped their bodies in garbage bags. There's an incinerator in the basement to burn the waste. I called 911 now and hid their bodies inside the incinerator. The cops came and took my account on a robbery done by two mad young boys. The security camera had the footage of them entering and wandering inside the restaurant in the very beginning. The cops identified them as escaped thugs who had past records of burglary and other crimes. The story flashed in the morning news as two boys murdered the night cook and tortured a lady employee of KFC, then took all the money and ran away. I went back the next day and burnt their bodies in my free time. Only I had the access to the basement, so my secret remained pretty safe. I continued working there for a month or two and then left the job for a fresh start. The boys are still on the wanted list. I am still the poor victim in everyone's eyes, when in reality, I got away with murder. Hey guys. I see many of you commenting on my videos that this channel deserves 1 million subscribers. But I also see the percent of people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So, if you like the content, want to support my channel, and want to see this channel reach 1 million subscribers, or maybe 500,000 subscribers, then go ahead, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. I used to work part-time at a KFC. I was a broke college student and needed a way to make some pocket money. The pay was all right for the hours I worked, 
but I worked at the closing shift, so I was able to take home any leftovers in the shop and save some money on food, too. For all the fuss KFC puts up about their secret 11 herbs and spices, actually, making the chicken takes shockingly little skill. You just batter a bunch of chicken parts in flour and spice mix and dunk it in an oil fryer for a while. If it's undercooked when you take it out, put it back in for a few minutes. If it's overcooked, serve it anyway. It's not like anyone will complain about the quality of the food if they're already willing to eat at a KFC. I never questioned what was inside the spice mix that went into the chicken I served the people every day. I didn't even like the way it tasted all that much. It was good for about the first week of me working there, but after having KFC for dinner every night for the sake of saving money, I started to get sick of it. Still, I kept eating it because, hey, free food is still free food. One day, I went to work as usual, fried a bunch of chicken for a bunch of people who were either regulars or just passing through, and split whatever was left with the other employees to take home. By the time I got home, the grease from the chicken had pulled onto the bottom of the cardboard box I used to carry it, and the once crispy batter had grown soggy during the long car ride. I entered my apartment and sat in front of the TV to eat the KFC chicken I brought back home with me. But I noticed something strange when I took the first bite. Now, I've eaten KFC's fried chicken more times than I care to remember since I started working for them. I knew the taste of KFC like the back of my hand, whether I liked it or not. And this was not what normal KFC chicken tasted like. There was an odd, almost flowery sweetness to it that I didn't recognize, and a slightly bitter aftertaste that left my tongue feeling a bit numb. It wasn't bad by any means, just strange. I'm sure that someone who hasn't eaten it almost every day like I had probably wouldn't have noticed the change in flavor. I assumed the flour or spice mix for the last batch must have been a few days past its expiration date and decided it'd be best if I didn't finish the chicken. I tossed the rest of the chicken out of my apartment window into the alley below for a lucky stray dog to come and eat it. The next night at work, one of my coworkers, let's call him Jerry, chatted with me about the strange tasting chicken as we were working the fryers to make more of the stuff. Hey Sally, is it just me or did the chicken last night taste a little off to you? I know what you mean. I couldn't bring myself to finish it. Was the spice expired or something? No, I checked the expiration date on the new spices that came in last night. They probably changed the formula without telling anyone to save on costs. I see. It probably doesn't taste all too different to people who don't eat it every day like we do. Yeah, to be honest, I think all of us have been eating way too much fried chicken since we started working here. I think you're right. There's more grease than blood in my veins at this point. How about we grab some actual food after work then? I hear there's a noodle shop nearby that stays open really late. Jerry must have been the smoothest guy on the face of the planet because I didn't realize he was asking me out on a date until halfway into the date and didn't even mind when I realized I was on one. I had a good time eating some actual food with a cute guy I liked and got home a little later than usual. Oddly enough, when I got back, the chicken pieces I'd thrown out the previous night were still there. Normally, the stray dogs in my area would fight for each other for even the smallest scraps of expired food. For three whole pieces of fried chicken to survive being devoured by them was a miracle, even if it was KFC chicken. Whatever was in that fried chicken, it must have smelled unpleasant enough to the dogs' sensitive noses that even they didn't want to eat it. In contrast, the sales back at the KFC skyrocketed over the next few days. So much so that there wouldn't be any chicken left at the end of the day for any of the employees to take home, even if they wanted to. The people who ate at the KFC changed too. They were the same regulars who came by from time to time since I started working there. But after the chicken began tasting strange, they came by almost every day and started ordering buckets worth of chicken instead of the modestly sized value menu items they usually ordered. Their appearances changed too. Their faces had become pale and filthy with bloodshot eyes that twitched and darted all over the place as they waited for their food. Red dots dotted their bodies like sore insect bites, which they scratched until their overgrown nails became bloody. It only got worse as time went on. 
Despite eating copious amounts of chicken almost every day, the regulars became skeletally thin with sunken faces that made them look more like walking corpses than people. On one particularly busy night, we ran out of chicken while the restaurant was full of the sickly looking regulars. One of the regulars came up to the cashier I was tending to at the time. One chicken bucket meal, please. I'm sorry, sir, but we're out of chicken for the night. At that, the man's bloodshot eyes widened in surprise and his lips curled into an angry snarl. You're out of chicken? Out of chicken? We'll be restocked tomorrow, sir, please. You, you can't do this to us. You can't be out. I need it. I need it now. The man shouting started gaining the attention of the other regulars. But instead of being annoyed, they seemed to be just as concerned as he was about the lack of chicken. The ones who were still eating held their buckets of chicken close, while those who were nearly finished with theirs eyed them with hungry eyes. The next few minutes went by in a flash. The regular who'd been talking to me saw a woman with a nearly full bucket of chicken and lunged at it to grab a drumstick. The moment his hand got near the bucket, the woman grabbed him by the wrist and chomped down on his fingers with unnatural force that severed them clean at the joint. There was a scream from the man, followed by several more from the other customers as they scratched and bit at one another like wild dogs to steal each other's chicken. I retreated back into the kitchen with the other employees and we called the police. Our manager told us that he'll go outside to wait for the police there and left the restaurant through the back door. When the police finally came, the entire place was filled with crazed customers fighting each other over the fried chicken, which they eagerly ate from the floor. The police had to tase the ones still standing to arrest them, though many of them had to be taken away in an ambulance instead. When I asked the police where the manager who went outside to wait for them was, they looked at me in confusion. They didn't see anyone outside when they got there. The KFC was closed for the next few days for a police investigation. Jerry and I both told the police about how the customers started acting strange ever since the chicken recipe changed. When they analyzed the spice mix we'd been using for the chicken, it tested positive for a highly addictive and very illegal drug. The same kind that was found in the system of every customer who was arrested the night all hell broke loose. Police theorized that the manager must have been putting addictive drugs in the chicken in an attempt to boost sales. It worked, but at the cost of the customer's physical and mental health. And when he realized that he was going to get caught, he ran away and never looked back like the greedy coward he was. I live with the guilt of accidentally ruining the lives of all those people every day. Jerry assures me that none of us could have known, but he knows that's a lie as well as I do. Had we cared more about our job, we could have saved a lot of people from the life of addiction they are now trapped in. I have decided against giving my name, as it is in my best interest. And also, because I am a full-blown accomplice to the horror you are about to hear. So my alias in this story will be known as Noah. This incident happened over five years ago, and I have held on to it throughout all these years. But no matter how much I try, I just can't sleep right. And maybe, just maybe, telling this will remove the huge weight that has been weighing down on my conscience all these years. I worked at KFC for over 12 years. I used to love the place, the smell of the chicken, the chatting customers. Basically, everything about that restaurant made me happy. If I remember correctly, it was on a Thursday and I had gotten a call from the manager's office. When I went there, I was told that I would soon be promoted to manager. I remember the manager at the time telling me, remember, being manager comes with a lot of new responsibilities and I hope you will be able to handle it the way I have all these years. I remember telling him with a smile, I am fully sure that I am capable, sir, and I know that I will be able to take on the position. He then replied to me in a low, dark tone with, I really hope you are. During my last weeks as a normal employee, I was given the night shifts. There was a lovely chubby kid called Timmy who always used to come to the restaurant. He would stay there all day till late at night. And since he was a regular customer, I befriended him. I later found out 
that the reason why he was always at the restaurant was because he hated going home. I remember he told me, my mom and dad are always fighting. They really don't care about me. So anytime they give me money to eat, I always come here so that I don't have to see them fight. I took a liking to the kid because I sympathized with him. So after my shift, I would always keep him company. Most times, I would sit with him as he ate. One particular thing I remember about the young boy Timmy was that he would always vigorously lick his fingers after eating his food. I would always chuckle about it because it always reminded me of the KFC slogan, it's finger licking good. So anytime I served him, I always said, it's so good, you'll lick your fingers. The next day during my second night shift, I saw a man coming in wearing a hoodie. I couldn't see his face, but he had a bad aura and he made the environment tense. He walked up to the counter to order a bucket of chicken. I remember walking up to the table to serve this strange man his food, and he said to me in a low, deep voice, Are these the finger-licking good ones? I was confused, but I said, Yeah, man, I guess so. He then replied, You sure these are finger-licking good ones? I don't eat any other ones but those. I was creeped out now, but I said with a forced smile, <laughs> Yeah, they, they sure are. With no response, he looked forward into the void and silently began to eat. I went back to the counter, a bit anxious and shaken up. After a while, the man finished his meal and he left, leaving only me and Timmy in the restaurant. I don't know why, but I heaved a sigh of relief as the environment wasn't tense anymore. The next night was basically the same thing as the man came in and ordered the same thing he did the night before. And the night after, followed in the same order as the man arrived at the same time. Nothing changed until the last night of that week. I was going to be the manager the next day, so it was my last day as a normal worker. I wasn't really doing anything, so I went out for a minute to throw out the trash. And when I came back, I couldn't see anyone. Neither Timmy nor the man was there. I was sure no one left as I didn't see anyone leave through the front door. I became scared and that's when I began to hear sounds coming from the kitchen. I waited for a few minutes before I decided to go check it out. As I finally reached the kitchen, I saw the weird man manning the grill while whistling a tune. I remember asking, what are you doing here? Where's the cook? The hooded man then replied to me in his usual low voice with, his shift is over, so it's my turn. I remember being shocked for a minute as he said it with all confidence, as if, he was sure of what he was saying. I then quickly said, I'm sorry, man, but you don't work here and customers aren't allowed back here, so you have to leave. The hooded man just ignored me and continued cooking. I was perplexed as I didn't know what to do. I contemplated forcefully dragging him out of the kitchen, but seeing as he was a huge, unpredictable man, I decided not to. As I was deep in thought, I noticed him bring out a jar from his pocket and begin to slowly add what I assumed to be fries dipped in ketchup into the deep fryer. I couldn't make them out at first glance, but with a closer look, I realized that he was slowly dropping bloody human fingers into the fryer. It took me a moment to process what I was saying as I slowly began to back away to call the police. And that's when I tripped on something. I quickly looked at what had tripped me and lying across the floor was young Timmy's corpse. His hands had been mutilated as all his fingers had been cut off. I began to scream as the sight of the child I had befriended on the floor shook me to my core. Within seconds, my manager immediately rushed in. I didn't know he was still around and I began to say, thank God you're here, please get help. This man killed this child. And that's when my manager put his hands to his lips and told me to keep quiet. Shh, you don't want to alert anyone. Now do you know what? He said, he then calmly walked to the hooded man and said, Mr. Cornelius here is just our night chef. That's when the man removed his hoodie and I saw his face. He had scarrings all over as he looked like a messed up butcher. He was just doing the needful. I was speechless and confused at the same time, but I remember stuttering out, are you feeding our customers human fingers? That's when my manager replied to me with, Gods, no. You see, Noah, the way fine wine adds a divine taste to dishes is the same way seasoned human fingers add to the taste of chicken. 
I was still frozen in place and confused. He then continued with, It's simple. To get that finger-licking good taste, we need good seasoned human fingers as it changes the taste entirely. It's like that special spice. Believe me, you won't understand till you've tried a fresh one from the batch. The cook then offered me a wing to taste. I was still frozen, contemplating whether to scream and run, and that's when my manager said, these are the new responsibilities that come with being a manager. I was once in your position, Mr. Noah, and I had to choose. And remember, you were the one who said you were ready for it. I don't know why, but there was this sick voice at the back of my head that told me to do it. Maybe it was my selfish human wants as I really wanted to be the manager. I had subconsciously waited so long for the position and if keeping one little messed up secret was the price to get what I wanted, so be it. So I did it. I remember taking the wing and eating it and I realized that everything they said was true as it had a beautiful sweet taste to it. Something I hadn't tasted before. I went on to be the manager of that branch for five years. And in that time, I ignored all the missing people posters that were popping up as I knew what had happened to each and every one of them. Even after all this time, I thought I had silenced my conscience, but I still see Timmy's face every night for the past five years. I'm not telling this story for forgiveness, neither am I telling it out of remorse. I'm doing it because I hope telling this story gives me the peace I so desperately need.